Hey everybody, this is a question I got um, for the IR, uh, the Interreconciliation Primary Course, Level 1 course, and it's and it's a really good one. Um, I think I will probably just keep this in the private group though. So hello G, um, I'm training with the Just Allow It 2.0 and I have a question. Um, when we are allowing an emotion, should we still preserve an internal aspect of desensification, de disidentification with the emotion or be completely taken by it? For example, I use some words to allow feelings. I say them out loud, making questions with, with them. Uh, acceptance allow, one, acceptance allow, two, welcome. Three, observe, notice with the phrase, it's not good, it's not bad, it's just energy, allow it to pass through. Uh, internally, they feel different. Uh, one, when I use the term acceptance or allow, I somehow get taken over by the emotion. If there's a need to cry, I cry. <laughs> if there's an anger, I hit a pillow. It was like I have, it was like, like I have incorporated the emotion. Two, when I use the word welcome, I relax. I feel the feeling, but still there's a sense of detachment and disidentification from the emotion. It's like treating the emotion with politeness and respect. There's an element of compassion here. The experience is not totally passive, as in one and three. It's like generating a bit of active energy of compassion to receive the emotion. Three, when I use the word use the words observe, notice, with a phrase, it's not good, it's not bad, it's just energy, allow it to pass through, I invite the emotion, and then I look to it with the eyes of a scientist, looking objectively to it, like a scientist without any drama. Yes, before Just Allow It Course 2.0, I did the Sedona Method and also the release technique, I could, I could tell. Um, thinking rationally, I think we should just use two or three, but sometimes I get the sensation that using one release more, although all of the internal experience caused by one, two, and three works, I know that because in all of them I feel lighter and released. So between one, two, and three, which one is the closest to the state of allowing? Wow. <coughs> there, boy, there's a, there's a lot here, boy, on, on, the, on the realm of the pure, purity experiential and also just how to approach... Uh, uh, allowing and doing the just allow it course. I wouldn't, when I first started reading this, I wasn't quite, I didn't quite uh, get that. So I will post this someplace where uh, people people can see it. Um, ooh, okay. Let's look first this, at the state of pure allowing. The state of pure allowing is like, I, 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 I compare it to being like the eye right? Or your ear. Whatever light strikes your eye gets in, period. It just collects it. Your ear is the same way. <laughs> the eye doesn't judge the light. It doesn't allow it. It doesn't welcome it. <laughs> I mean, it's got no connotation whatsoever. It just receives it. And so the words allow or welcome or um, what was the other one we what we did? Welcome, I relax and observe, notice. They all have a different connotation. Allow means like I'm giving something permission, especially if I'm really not all that keen on having it come around. And that's really the reason I chose that word, because for in in the in most people's cases they're in a state of resistance, and allowing is the step the first step. Okay, I'm just going to allow it to be there and be totally with that feeling. And eventually it moves in to a state of actually w potentially welcoming it. Um, and also that state you talk about where you can actually observe it. Because when, when you begin to observe it, right, when you're no longer fighting with it and you can just see it, you can begin to see it for what it is. Now, that doesn't mean you have to become cold, like a, like a scientist and an objective, but you are being objective about it. You want to be precise. Um, there's another video I, I, I did on an anxiety exercise where I did it in that, in that fashion, um, where, we're, where you're just being with it, right? And a sense of anxiety is a sense that we really do want to get rid of and is 
quickly as we possibly can. But um, we need we. But if we're really allowing it to be there, if we're giving it full permission to be there, we can then begin to become curious about it, and we can really begin to discover its nature. And in so doing, we begin to discover our our own nature, who we actually are, which is the whole point of this. At the essence of allowing, if you notice behind all three of these things, whether you're allowing it and you're feeling the emotion and letting the emotion move through the system and you're crying or getting angry, whatever it is, whether you're welcoming it, which is a sense of it's okay to be here, right? Allowing means it's not necessarily okay. Okay, you can be here, but you know, behave, right? Um, whereas welcoming, it's like, yeah, come, it's it's good. I mean, there is more compassion to it, and observing <clears throat> is more is more is more cold. But I want you to notice, all three of those are being noticed by an awareness that is in a pure state of love. It's in a pure state of zero preference, zero resistance zero concern. Ultimately, that's where I want you to get. Because from there, it goes beyond all three of them. This is like, it's so very subtle we don't even notice it. Because we're so busy being in the various states, you know, keeping track of this and that and, and, uh, and, no, am I allowing? Am I welcoming? Just rather than approaching it intellectually, just be in that place where you're observing it, where you are even prior to any of those, where even more subtle than any of those three approaches, and watch how they naturally happen all by themselves in response to the energy. That's the art of it. Right? If somebody has a feeling of resistance, than to just simply allow it to be, uh, to be there for a minute, even with the resistance, is an opening. Right? At some point, you can become, you can actually begin to welcome it, even feel compassion and love for it. You begin to identify it for what it is, and at the same time, objectively, very precisely, begin to understand it. But you'll notice how all three of those are like states of mind that weave in and out of each other. And you are in a position that's even more subtle than that. That position is pure allowing. But to be even more accurate, it's pure awareness. Allowing still has a characteristic to it. Awareness like the eye, there's no character. The eye doesn't add anything to what it sees. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't eliminate anything from what it sees. Whatever strikes it gets in. Now the brain adds all sorts of stuff to it. There's all sorts of things in the system that get added to it and associations and memories before it ends up being a, an image of in the visual cortex and in the cerebral cortex, an image with associations and memory and identification and the, the, the whole story about it, an entire history going up multiple lifetimes, boom, and it all happens in an instant. But when you're just looking at the eye itself, it's pure awareness, pure perception, pure seeing. And if you just notice that in that place of pure seeing, there's no disturbance. Everything is welcome, but not it's compassion. Everything's allowed, but it's not like going up and down. It, it, it itself is not crying. It's aware of the crying. It's aware of all of the emotions going on within the system. That is the state of allowing. Or better put, the, the pure awareness, which is the real state of your being. That's the... That's the real nature of your being. And the rest of this brings you to, uh, to that. So I th hope that answers your question. Uh, let me make sure. Um, thinking rationally, I think we should use two or three, but sometimes I got the sensation that using one, I release more. Although 
all of the internal experience is caused by one, two, and three work. I know that because in all of them, I feel lighter and released. Yes, they all work because they all, they all let go of a position you're ha you have about them. Right? When you are holding on to a position about them, there's going to be some kind of resistance to it. But you, in any one of those, that position softens. Whether you're allowing it to be there, welcoming it to be there, becoming curious enough to know what it actually is. And really, three, where you're observing an objective, you can only do that if you've already welcomed it or allowed it to be there. Right? You can't look at something objectively when you just, all you want to do is get rid of it. So they, they really contribute to, uh, to, to one another. And there's no rule for how you should do one uh, or when you should do one. Thinking rationally, I think we should use two or three, but sometimes they get the sensation. No, use them all. And don't think it's like, okay, under this circumstance, I do this. It's not algorithmic. It's, it's spontaneous. So just watch how it works. If you feel resistance coming up, well, then you can move to allowing. Just, ah, okay, there's a sense of resistance. And you can allow the sense of resistance. Don't try to force yourself to drop a position. And then you'll get to the point where you can, a feeling comes up and you don't resist it. You actually welcome it because it has value to it. It has life in it. It has energy about it. So it can be, it can be well, a feeling coming up, even a heart feeling. You can feel grateful for it. You can feel the sense of welcoming to it. And cultivate that curiosity. Because when you really cultivate, cultivate that curiosity, it's a total acceptance of what it is. It's really a reversal in your position. Because now you're not just trying to allow it to be there. And oftentimes we try to allow something to be there. Under the surface, we're allowing it in the hopes it's going to go away. It, 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 says, it says, right, not good, not bad, just energy. Allow it to pass through. Most people grab right onto that last part <laughs> and, and go, oh yeah, and allow it to pass through because they want it to go away. Rather than the first part, it's not good, it's not bad. Without the labeling, without the identi identification we throw on, without the memory and association, all the stuff, the story around it, it isn't good or bad. It's totally neutral. It's just a feeling arising in the system. And it will subside in the system. That is the point of total equanimity and total curiosity. Now the inner world is, is a place to be played in and discovered and not a problem to be solved. And that is the, the doorway into really establishing your sense of identity as the pure awareness that is the real heart and soul of, of allowing. So that came from Mak Maksul. I hope, I, I, hope, I hope I'm saying that correct. Maxwell, Maxwell Alves, and uh, beautiful, absolutely beautiful question. Thank you so much. Thanks to all who are who, who are listening to these. Uh, until later, namaste.